Good evening. My name is Justin Van Mullum. I'm with the Parks and Recreation Department, and we're here to talk about the Ortega Park Master Plan. I want to thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to continue to be a part of this uh, public outreach process. You are stakeholders of this um, master plan, and we appreciate that. Our meeting goals are uh, to give you an update on the project. It's been a while since we've uh, had a chance to, to talk with you, to review the um, public art opportunities and to have a public art discussion. <clears throat> there is um, Spanish translation available. If, uh, if you need it, you can uh, raise your hand in the um, uh, menu. And then we'll have uh, questions in the, we have two different segments of the presentation and we'll have questions at the end of each segment. So please hold your questions until that time. Thank you. So as I stated earlier, uh, this has uh, been a, a rather large community designed uh, project and it's uh, been through over 150 community members. As you can see on the, um, photograph to the right. That's one of our workshops that you probably participated in or potentially some of the surveys or the in-person uh, meetings that we had. We've also had seven public hearings and uh, then we took the uh, master plan after it was fully developed and took it to city council and had unanimous approval. So here on the left, we have the existing park. And on the right, you can see that we've got a master plan that's created with a vibrant community uh, involvement. It's a now a destination with a range of recreation opportunities. We heard strongly from the community that the field space was important, along with opportunities for multi-generations to enjoy the park and through outdoor activities and year-round swim, uh, those can be accomplished. So we uh, hope to take this um, existing underutilized and dysfunctional park and create a community uh, designed destination that will meet the needs of the neighborhood. One of the things that was heard as well is uh, how parking is um, currently an issue. There are 40 parking spaces on site and as you can see in the master plan on the right, we are going to increase that to 63 spaces and that will include six parking spaces that will be uh, accessible and two uh, loading areas in the um, uh, lower uh, left hand corner. Now I'd like to turn the presentation over to Rich Hanna, our recreation manager. Thank you, Justin, and good evening. <clears throat> so uh, Rich Hanna, recreation manager. Uh, I served as the project lead for the department uh, as the Ortega Park master plan was being developed. Uh, I participated in all of the meetings as the public identified their recreation element priorities for the renovated park. Uh, I would also add that one of the key considerations as we went through this process for the amenities that I'll speak about shortly is that any increase in positive activity in the park for all ages and throughout the day is a strategic tool for positive programming and preventing misuse in the park. So in speaking specifically to the multi-sport artificial turf field, many participants in the public meetings were keenly aware of the lack of local field space for sporting and recreational activities. And the turf fields that the city currently maintains and manages receive high use and are often closed for several months of the year to renovate to improve playing and safety considerations. A key priority was a multi-sport turf field, which has the ability to provide year-round access with safe and consistent playing conditions, requires limited maintenance closures, and can accommodate a variety of turf sports, including soccer, lacrosse, rugby, football, and youth baseball, all of which are currently all competing for turf and field space here locally in our community. 
So in a way to maximize recreation, this field was designed to achieve just that, accommodate year-round safe playing conditions. I'd like to point out that the youth baseball field in the illustration is for practices only and is essentially a different turf color that in no way impedes playing conditions for the other turf sports. The multi-sport artificial turf was designed to be a regional to not be a regional attraction that just serves tournaments and increases density in the neighborhood, but instead has the ability to support up to three smaller practice fields playing widthway or when needed a full-size soccer pitch for games. The development of this field was also done with the understanding that a master plan to develop Dwight Murphy Field was also in process to include a full-size soccer field was running in parallel with this process. The addition of sport lighting further increases access through a permit process for times like now when it is dark by 4.30 or 5 and provides the opportunity for youth sports to practice or play after school and then adults to use similar times to the current access at the junior high sports fields, which is traditionally 7 to 10 p.m. Throughout the master plan, it became obvious that there'll be a lot of competing uses and times, so the department plans for the field to be open for drop-in and permitted use. As the multi-sport field becomes a reality, the department is committed to developing an equitable system to coordinate the permit to coordinate and permit sport field access for informal and formal activities, which is the same role the department did on behalf of the Santa Barbara School District for over a decade when managing community access to the junior high sport fields. Next slide, please. Another key priority that came from the public meetings was a more functional and flexible swimming pool facility. I wanted to start with the aquatic features and then come back to the other structures that you see in the illustration. The main pool, uh, which is lettered number B, was designed to accommodate a variety of non-competitive activities, which is why the pool is only five feet deep at the deepest point. The main pool can accommodate everything from lap swim, recreation swim, youth and adult swimming lessons, aqua aerobics, paddleboard yoga. If you can imagine it, it can be accomplished in this pool. However, it's not capable of hosting swim meets or water pole tournaments, so it will always be an asset to the community. Similarly, the inclusion of a water slide, which was a priority, so in illustration number D, these slides terminate in a fiberglass chute, not a pool, and therefore are much safer than slides that end in a pool. And again, a feature that can be operational when the weather permits and closed based on seasonality or weather. Additionally, there was a demand through the stakeholder and public meetings for a wading splash pool with a beach entry, which is illustrated by letter C. This is ideal for younger kids and their parents, introducing them to an aquatic environment and provides a splash type feature. And it's even perfect for seniors. These pools are typically warmer and can be used similarly to the main pool for aquatic exercises when the water features are turned off. A key consideration for this phase of the park was to retain the welcome house, which is illustrated by letter A. That will serve as the pool entry, which is required by the health department to manage access into and outside of an aquatic facility. But the, the renovated Ortega Welcome House will also function as a space that can be used for small community meetings, trainings, birthday parties, etc. Something similar to what the Welcome House provides today, but with obviously an enhanced access to the pool, or it can be separated from the pool access and the pool deck for small, smaller, more private community-based meetings. Lastly, as in any facility, uh, you'll see in letter F and I guess the other letter is gone. Uh, we have to have restrooms and shower facilities, and we did our best to minimize the amount of uh, facilities that would be available here, but are required by health code to make sure that we meet the requirements for all of the swimming activities at any one time or at different points of the season. One of the key objectives, similar to the multi-turf sports field that I was speaking about earlier is that the pool can operate year round um, throughout the day and into the evenings. It will also have lighting for evening activities and drop in and is designed to operate like any other swimming pool here in Santa Barbara or you may be used to where you can pay for a drop in or there'll be membership type fees available consistent with what we currently do at Los Banos. We'll also have easy drop off and parking as Justin alluded to in his earlier presentation. Next slide please. 
So as I mentioned earlier when I started the presentation, we wanted to make sure that the park was engaged at all times. Uh, and not everybody's a swimmer and not everybody may be involved in a turf sport. Um, so we looked at ways to bring more activity to the park for sustained periods of time when the park is actually open to the public. And so currently Ortega Park already has a full court basketball uh, set up there, which is in much need of repair. So we wanted to make sure that we included a basketball court, something that people currently use and was a key priority in terms of things that came out of the public stakeholder meetings. We also wanted to add new and ongoing ways to engage people socially and I guess competitively. So we also are planning on adding cornhole and bocce ball courts, ping pongs and game tables in the park space <clears throat> to bring a wide range of families, individuals, and community members together to participate in these activities. We also heard loud and clear as we went through the public process uh, that a skate park, something that is different but parallel to and complementing to the skater's point that's currently down in East Beach. Next slide, please. So through the development of the skate park, this, this presentation, these slides has morphed quite a bit since the original stakeholder meetings and since we went to council for adoption. There's been a series of skating community workshops. Uh, the park has grown in size to include more skating amenities, bowls, transitions, street skating, etc. And the proposed skate park that you see is a complement to the existing skaters point and represents the effort of the previous two skate park workshops. I'd like to point out that as you're looking at this slide here, you're seeing a lot of the features that are common now in a lot of skate parks in various communities throughout California. You have an area that allows for street skating and transitions. Uh, you have areas that are similar to a, an empty swimming pool that engages folks to be able to drop in and surf the bowl uh, and also ride around and, and pull off high trick elements, but there's also enough flat space within inside of the skate park also for young skaters to come and learn how to skate and be around folks that are skating at a high level to be energized and hopefully pick up this sport and be something that they wanna do for a lifetime or if nothing else, complement what they currently do. Next slide, please. And just as a further close up, as I, as I alluded to earlier, uh, you can see how a skate park or a bowl feature within a skate park can be used. It allows skaters to access it from different points or a skater to maneuver through this section of the skate park and then exit. Uh, it's certainly something that uh, came out loud and strong as part of all of the stakeholder meetings. And it's an element that we were happy to be able to include in the skate park design as we move forward. Next slide, please. So knowing the, the focus of tonight's uh, presentation is on art, and I just want it to be available for any questions as it relates to uh, the recreation elements that are included in the slides that have been presented or anything that I've covered. So at this point, I'll, I'll answer any questions before turning the presentation on to the next presenter. So anyone who would like to speak, please raise your hand. I, we did have a question from somebody um, in the questions box asking what a splash pad was. Thank you, uh, Ms. Navarez. Uh, great question. So a splash pad is a feature that um, actually has no standing water. Uh, they're very common and there's a variety of ways to achieve that. Uh, splash pad can be something as simple as uh, a flat surface area with fountains that bubble up on certain timer intervals. Uh, it can also have play features that can be uh, included for individuals to shoot water cannons at each other. It's essentially a way to introduce young children of, and frankly people of all ages to an aquatic environment in a safe way where they're not actually in a swimming pool or a body of water. It's a great way to cool off and the splash pad that's shown in that area of the park uh, would be open and available at no cost at all times that the park is open and available to the public, which currently is proposed like all of our other parks to be sunrise to one half hour after sunset. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Mark Alvarado would like to speak. Uh, Mr. Alvarado, if you want to unmute yourself. Okay, thanks. Hey, Rich. Um, I was just curious, Rich, if you're getting any kind of um, communication, perhaps that the Santa Barbara High School or the Uni Santa Barbara Unified might want to have like a shared use for any of, especially lacrosse, because that's a, a, an upcoming sport. But I'm just curious to see if that, any conversations around that with shared use. 
thanks for the question, Mr. Alvarado. Um, so short answer is uh, we've been in contact with Santa Barbara High School. We do share a joint use agreement with them. Uh, and we know that lacrosse is an emerging sport. Um, where we're seeing the biggest ask currently right now is through the clubs and we're working with them to provide access at some of our other turf fields like Dwight Murphy. Um, you know, and the goal here, as I think you're keenly aware is, you know, there'll be times of the day when the park, you know, there's schools in and there might be opportunities for athletic classes or programs to come down and use this. But the ultimate goal for this field is to be a community asset. Um, but we'll be working with Santa Barbara High School and the junior high immediately adjacent to make sure we're maximizing the park. And, and likewise, if they have amenities at their school locations, we'd like to make sure they're available to the public as well as part of the joint use agreement. Okay, um, we have a Laura Munoz. Munoz, Ms. Munoz, if you could unmute yourself. Ms. Laura Munoz, or Munoz, if you can unmute your little microphone. Try it again. There we go. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Yes, hi there. I am a uh, long time resident here on East Coda Street and I was wondering about the um, skateboard park. Um, we don't really have a lot of skateboarders here in the community. Uh, the trend more is mostly like um, bike riders. So I was wondering if this park can be more converted into the bike riders park instead of skateboarders. That's that's a great question. So um, currently down at the existing skaters park, we do have elements of um, bike riders, skaters, and um, rollerbladers and scooters down there. Um, the features of uh -huh. this park would make it relatively or extremely complicated for more of the what I'm seeing to be as a as a new growth and and resurgence in biking here in the community for tricks and those types of things. Right, uh, right. Is, yeah, and and my from what I understand and what I've been seeing locally is more larger flat spaces with some elements are, are highly desirable for that type of activity. Um, this park wouldn't provide those types of features and was not designed for specifically bikes, just based on the wear and tear of the edges and the mm -hmm. other components that are in the park. Oh, okay, bummer. Okay, cool. Okay, now we have a Michael Montenegro. You had your hand raised and now it's down. Uh, if you would like to speak, please unmute yourself. Okay, go uh, ahead. Okay. Um... I have like several questions. Thank you for um, taking the time to hear me out. And you don't have to answer it all right now. Perhaps uh, you can answer it later in the second session. Um, I put in the question input is, um, one is what have y'all considered doing with the existing murals? Uh, that have been there since 1979. They're the second oldest outdoor murals. Then also on the corner of Sasi Puedes and um, what's the next street over of Coda? No, it's no Ortega, Coda. Ortega, yeah. On the corner of Sasi Puedes and Ortega, where the community playhouse is at, if you look at that corner, on the on the concrete there's concrete engravements they've been there since 1975 and they're essentially community art and i think that's something that should be considered in preservation uh and that could look in that could look like in so many in so many ways whether uh you know actually physically preserve them or take digital photos uh that's one of my questions is like what have what has this Ortega master plan project considered with this uh, culturally, uh, culturally historical significant murals and uh, concrete engravement? 
then um sure mr uh, mr mr montenegro I, and i i don't mean to cut you off i just want to make sure that we we answer your questions at the right time of the presentation i'm i'm very aware of the the artwork and the murals and the um the concrete prints and so forth at the park uh, having worked there for a long time as a part of my career um, i will be transitioning this part of the presentation off to uh, another colleague that's going to speak to the art with that's currently in the park and then open it up for opportunities and questions. I'd be happy to answer any question related to uh, recreation or the use of the spaces that I covered. Um, and so if you have a question related to that, I'd be happy to answer it or come back on at the end of the presentation. Um, otherwise, I'd, I'd, I'll allow you to respond. Otherwise, I'll turn this over okay. to the next well, presenter. Well, is the second session is about the murals, right? murals and art opportunities within okay. the park correct okay so before getting into i because i know ricardo venegas um before getting into that i'll just start with the first question is have with your community outreach have you gotten any uh input from the local chumash community to answer that question we we held several workshops um throughout the master plan process. The last workshop that we hosted was in the Ortega Welcome House um, towards, right before we were taking the, pre the entire master plan to city council for adoption. I couldn't tell you if there was a representative there from the Chumash community, um, but what we heard in that meeting was the importance of having art in the park, looking for opportunities where it could be in the park, discussions about preserving uh, or replicating what's currently in place in the renovated uh, new park as part of the master plan. But I couldn't speak to specifically um, if anybody that participated in that meeting was from the Chumash. No. Well, okay, no, that's one of my questions because I just think it's really important to have their input. We're on their land and that area used to be a lagoon. so that place is of a special significance and it's 2020 so i think it's just really important with respect to include you know in, in the sense of equity to go out of our way in this case this project the people who are running this project to put in the effort to outreach with the uh, chumash community and if you need any help i'm more than happy to um ask my chumash constituents to um how to get how to get involved because you know we're on their land. Sure, sure. I, I I would I would agree with everything you said, and I think this is the first of many steps uh, as it relates to public art and art and and other um, displays of art in different formats there at the renovated park. And it's it's um, a big focus of tonight's presentation, and and will continue on as we long before we go into the park and actually even start doing any of the rev renovation um, objectives. So it's a perfect segue. Your questions are appropriate. I'd like to introduce Community Service Services Coordinator to Ricardo Venegas, who will speak about the art components, and then there'll be opportunities for more questions after that. Ricardo? Thank you, uh, me. Rich. I'm, I'm sorry. We had one oh. more person with their hand raised. I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. Okay, Mr. Sebastian Aldana, please unmute yourself. Okay, you may go ahead. Okay, um, is the next meeting the planning committee, uh, planning commission, I should say? And uh, and if so, uh, what's on the agenda? Uh, Good evening, Mr. Aldana. Um, I believe we're scheduled to be at planning committee or commission. Um, I could turn it back to Justin Van Mullum to talk to you about whatever else is on the agenda for that day. Um, but yes, that would be the next phase. Justin? Yes, uh, we are on the agenda for uh, December 3rd, I believe is the date. And uh, there are only two items on the agenda and we'll be the first one up. Okay, but what's on the agenda pertaining to the park? What are you going to be talking about? Uh, we will be talking about the the master plan uh, in its uh, like the what you've just uh, seen, and also the environmental document that goes along with that master plan, so we can receive titlements and uh, go to the next phase of the project, which would be construction drawings. Okay, thank you. 
<clears throat> Ms. Navarez, is there any more questions for me before I turn it over to Ricardo? I do not see any more raised hands. Okay. Well, at this time, I'll turn it over to Ricardo Venegas, and I'll be available if there's any other questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Um, uh, saludos, good evening, everybody. And uh, now just quickly, I, I, I did want to respond to uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Montenegro. Um, in response to, to your question, are we including the Shumash uh, community? Uh, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I've done uh, with most of the murals that we've done here in Santa Barbara is uh, reaching out to them and, and, and uh, pretty much uh, asking for permission to do some of the murals, and, like you said, in, in, in La Casa de Dios, in, in their home. A good example has been the murals over at the Santa Barbara Junior High. We did uh, a, a mural that was entirely a, a themed uh, uh, Shumash. Uh, one of them was called the uh, Rainbow Bridge and also uh, Earth Mother. And that particular mural, we actually had a uh, Marcus uh, and his family come out and, and do, do a, a celebration, a, a blessing of the mural. So absolutely, we, we are definitely going to include the Shumash community. We also did a mural up at uh, Cleveland School, uh, which uh, we did the same thing. So absolutely, that's uh, that's part of the the uh, process that we do, we want to be inclusive and include uh, all our brothers and sisters, uh, uh, first uh, peoples here in, in, in the area. So thank you, excellent question. So uh, go, going back to uh, the history of uh, the murals at Ortega Park, I, I think most of you know that it was a, a 1978 uh, joint collaboration with the Parks uh, Department in La Casa La Raza, and, and uh, many of you know Mr. Manuel Unzueta, he was one of the original artists uh, who took a, a group of uh, youth, uh, uh, 10 to 15 youth under his wing to teach them not only uh, the creation of, of murals, but also the history, and the knowledge of uh, the ancestors. So the, the result was a, a creation of 15 murals, uh, themed in Aztec, Mexican, uh, Chicano uh, art, as well as uh, Shumash uh, uh, images and iconography. Uh, now the murals, uh, I think, and we can all agree, they have been a tremendous uh, source of pride for the community as they have brought uh, unity, uh, have promoted uh, peace and understanding between the different uh, cultures that uh, we have here in our community. And uh, with that, you know, we, we always want to remain true uh, to the original uh, concept of, of having the murals, and that is... Uh, uh, sharing, sharing culture and imparting knowledge and, and, and really motivating the youth in our community to, uh, to have uh, positive outcomes. So the murals have also served another purpose, and that is that they uh, have been very instrumental in keeping the youth community focused. And uh, uh, those of you that uh, understand uh, that some of the history behind uh, Ortega Park, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, ongoing concerns with safety, and, and I think the murals bring bring safety as well. So, uh, with that, we want to continue that tradition. Uh, the murals do require ongoing maintenance and repair. Uh, luckily, in Santa Barbara, we've been fortunate to have a lot of wonderful artists uh, who, throughout the years, have volunteered much of their time. And, and I want to point out specifically Mr. Manuel Sueta, Carlos Cuellar and many others who have made tremendous contributions in, in you know, using their own time to, to basic, basically preserve uh, the, the murals. Now, in 2002, we had a very direct uh, effort in, in uh, doing a more robust uh, uh, maintenance and restoration of the murals, uh, which uh, began with the creation of a mural, mural restoration program, thanks to some, some funding that came in through the community, as well as uh, uh, funding from the department. Uh, next uh, slide, please. <clears throat> so these are some of the existing murals uh, right now. Uh, we have uh, here, the first one on the left, uh, Campesinos, originally done by, by Armando Vallejo. In the middle, we have uh, Cuatlique, done by Carlos uh, Cuella in 2008. And on the right, we have uh, Niños del Maíz, uh, done by Manuel Unzueta, uh, originally, for those of you that remember, there used to be another mural there. It was act actually 
the circle of life. And uh, unfortunately, the, the wall in that particular location uh, needed some extensive repairs and, and uh, we were unable to save the mural, but uh, we brought uh, Manuel Unsueta and actually Annette uh, Unsueta, his, his daughter, to come in and, and help us with that. And it's important to point out the commitment from Manuel uh, over over the, the, the years and, and basically being involved in these projects uh, and his willingness to uh, impart his knowledge and skills onto new generations. So every one of these murals that you see, it wasn't just the artist uh, himself or herself working on the murals, but it, it also involved uh, groups of youth from the neighborhood working on these projects. So I, I think that's a, a very solid investment uh, that has paid uh, uh, dividends uh, across the years because it's reduced uh, uh, vandalism in the neighborhood and of course it has improved uh, to the overall aesthetics of the community and the park. Uh, next uh, slide please. Uh, these are additional murals. Uh, the one on the left, La Playa, this was actually done under the artistic direction of Carlos Cuellar and uh, uh, Mrs. Teran, who was a student at UCSB, and, and again, they worked with a group of youth teaching them uh, uh, proper uh, art techniques. On the right side, we have some of the original murals done in 1979. This one is a Aztec uh, Shumash uh, theme, and it was origi originally done by Armando, uh, Armando Rascon, who's actually a very well-known artist. Uh, last, last I heard of him, he was up in the San Francisco area, and very, very well-known artist. Uh, next slide. We we have a wonderful opportunity to uh, recreate and and preserve some of these uh, paintings with the new facilities that are going to be coming into Ortega Park. Uh, uh, to give you some perspective on the dimensions and the availability for uh, canvas uh, to uh, recreate some of these murals, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Justin uh, and uh, let him take it from there. But if you have any questions for me, I can can answer to the best of my abilities uh, anything that you might have. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, we'll uh, be taking questions at the end of the this segment. And uh, I just want to start in uh, by saying that the approximate square footage of the existing buildings is, say, about a thousand square feet. And we're going to double that square footage. So I know it's hard to see uh, the scale of these uh, drawings, but we're going to have twice as much area for opportunities for murals. And that's kind of what uh, I wanted to show with this slide. Now, we have the, the ability to kind of move a few things around before we start with um, construction drawings uh, to help facilitate that. Now, the buildings themselves can't move, but we could uh, play with facades and help really create uh, the proper frame or um, canvas for the art uh, to try to recreate some of these uh, more historic uh, elements. For instance, uh, this area right here is uh, part of the pump house and it uh, lends itself to that same shape of some of the existing art uh, elements. So here, we have the uh, family picnic area, and it is um, one of those areas that uh, we have a lot of opportunity for, for art, art on the pavement, art, uh, three-dimensional art that could be seen as you walk by on this uh, long promenade. And uh, in the center where the, uh, the uh, shade sails are, uh, there's another art opportunity that I will show you on that next slide. But this is a, a community gathering area that uh, you could be at a, a bench or in the grass. You could be waiting for maybe someone playing soccer or uh, someone playing in one of the water features that you can see uh, over to the, the far right. So here's the playground and family picnic area. And as you can see in uh, J, that's where the uh, shade sails and picnic area is located. And you can barely see the benches that are underneath the, the shade canopy. But this is a, a gathering area that uh, was 
asked for uh, as part of our outreach program. And then you can see letter K is areas for maybe three-dimensional public art, but there's also areas within that picnic zone that could be art on the pavement uh, or art within the uh, landscaping. And if you look over at uh, the playground, which is uh, H, there's opportunity within the playground itself uh, like in several parks in Santa Barbara where art elements are designed within the playground or even potentially on the uh, rubber surfacing. As you can see that there's quite a few different colors and playful areas, that's another potential canvas, as well as uh, right where letter H is located. That is a bench area that maybe as a parent, you would sit in the shade and you would watch your child uh, play. In, in the playground elements or at the um, uh, letter I, the splash playground, which is uh, another opportunity for, for artwork, the splash playground and the benching that uh, you would have at the playground itself. Entry elements are also an excellent way to kind of identify the park entry and give it a little bit more character that represents the neighborhood. Uh, here is a on the right is an example of how the community art workshop gave their uh, mailbox a little bit more entrance interest. And I think that the these entryways, not only the columns or the pavement, there's a lot of opportunities for artists to develop a, a, a canvas that really draws people into the park and uh, is a dynamic uh, entrance. Here's some public art around town. The pathway mosaic, uh, you may uh, recognize the uh, Shumash art that's on Cabrillo Boulevard uh, across from Ambassador Park. And then of course the um, uh, Bud Bottoms whale tail bench that is uh, located in the La Arcata. And uh, then some of you may remember the handprints that are on uh, entry elements going into the uh, kids' world. And uh, those are, I think that was done in 92 and definitely uh, is very memorable for a lot of people that worked on the, the uh, construction of that uh, playground. Here are some art uh, examples in other communities. This is in San Antonio, and it was a, similar to this park that was a renovation, and they did a lot of outreach and came up with uh, seating areas similar to what could be in our playground that has a lot of uh, interest and in sculpture and uh, mosaic designs. And as you can see in the picture on the right, it's uh, well liked by all ages. And I wanted to thank uh, George Guy for uh, providing these photographs because uh, this is a great example of how you can turn some skate elements into a canvas as well. And uh, uh, the picture on the right is, uh, a skate bowl similar to the one that we have, and it's beautiful uh, ocean themed, uh, feels like you can just dive right in. And then on the left is a, a wall in a skate park that, park that really gives you <clears throat> a, um, uh, a sense of uh, intrigue and uh, it's very um, defining. So our next steps, uh, we, um, we're gonna take questions after, after this slide and we uh, would like to get back to uh, you, the stakeholders in uh, early 2021 and have you help us develop a public art plan to execute art within this uh, 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 new, our revised park. And then, uh, we're going to take that plan and try to incorporate it as much as we can into the construction drawings. 
And uh, the first phase of construction, we are hoping, depending on funding, that would be the parking improvements. And that would be in 2022. Uh, we are currently seeking grant funding and city funding for the project. And we're estimating that the construction costs would be approximately 14 million at this time. So I'd like to uh, take questions. So if you could uh, please raise your hand uh, or if you have any comments. Okay, so our first the person would be Sebastian Aldana again. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, Santa Barbara and Puerto Vallarta are sister cities. And there was, um, in the 70s, uh, it wasn't mentioned in the history. Uh, there was a group from Puerto Vallarta that helped out also. And uh, I, I, uh, I'm part of the group, uh, Santa Barbara, uh, Puerto Vallarta, Sister City. And, you know, it'd be great to re you see if the, those artists are still around, or if not, uh, uh, there's various artists that come here, <clears throat> or at least one, that comes here once a year for the I Marinari over there at the mission. So there's um, that'd be great to because it, it is a sister city. And then also um, in Puerto Vallarta, it's called El Parque de los Azulejos. Azulejo means tile, and basically it's a mosaic, broken tile. So if you could Google. El Parque de los Azulejos. Azulejos is A-Z-U-L-E-J-O-S. Should I say it one more time? Or you got it? Got it. Okay. And uh, you'll see the nice, uh, beautiful benches they have, the columns and beautiful art uh, uh, out of mosaic. But all I want to mention is don't forget about uh, Puerto Vallarta, the sister city. Keep them on thank, the list. Thank you for your input. Justin, if I can quickly jump in. Uh, uh, Mr. Sebastian, we're, or I should say, I am actually developing a, a history of, of uh, the murals that's going to be a little more robust. And, and yes, I do have that information already. And some of those original artists, uh, some of them are still around Alvaro Suman, Javier Nino. And a few others, and once I'm ready with uh, that report, I'll be making uh, some of that detail available and, and sharing it with the community at some point. So, so yes, we are aware that uh, there was was a link uh, with that, and it was actually done through through Manuel Nsueta. He was a link that originally went to Puerto Vallarta to, to paint, and, and through him and, and the connection here with the sister cities, uh, that's, that's that's one of the elements that. Um, I'm looking into, and once I have a little bit more info, I'll, I'll come back and share that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Mark Alvarado. Mark, if you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. Thank you. I, I might have missed it when Ricardo presented um, his aspect of the presentation. Um, so I apologize if, if this was answered um, as part of, it's a kind of a two-part question, but so I'm wondering with the existing artwork and murals that are there that, in, in regard to the outline, the history and the artists associated with those pieces, is, is, there, is, is there an effort to preserve any of the work? And if so, what, and, and and thank you, Jason, because you did show the opportunities for replication in areas where, you know, opportunities as you stated within the elements, and so that was really helpful. But I'm just curious with the existing artwork, is there an inventory of any percentage of any of the of the pieces that can be saved and preserved into the new design? Unfortunately, as um, as we went through this process and trying to maximize the recreational use uh, and looking at trying to preserve the artwork at the same time that the recreational use uh, just demanded the space. And so the structures have to be 
moved and relocated. But as I said previously, there's going to be twice as much uh, canvas space on on the new structures uh, that are going to provide all of these uh, different amenities for the park. And so okay. we, we do have the ability to replicate uh, in a lot of different locations. Right, right. And I appreciate that. So I, the second part of my question then is that would there be an opportunity in, instead of destroying those pieces is perhaps finding I'm sorry Mark you broke up there can you repeat that alternative location within another public parks site or um, so, yeah so the second part of my question was would there perhaps be any opportunity to relocate those pieces to another location to, to so we don't lose them completely in their entirety because of their historic significance, um, I'm just wondering. You know, I I know the work of all of those artists, and and it's just would be a shame if we were to lose them. And I understand the demand that the re other recreational facilities created in this design, but I'm just kind of advocating if there could be a possibility to look as a relocation to save those pieces. What I would recommend is uh, um, Michael Monteret Negro brought up a, a great point that there's the um, uh, concrete flat work that has hand prints and uh, different information on it. We could look at uh, kind of a piece by piece uh, what could be potentially incorporated into this park or other parks, but uh, that would be part of um, of a full process. Unfortunately, the the structures themselves they're just wood and plaster, and uh, they they don't lend themselves to actually be relocated. And as you, oh. you probably know, uh, that they've um, weathered over time, and, and sure. a lot of them haven't made it through the um, the process or the this timeline. Did I answer your question, Mark? Mark, I think we lost you. Thank you, Jason. I think we answered Mark's question. Could we go on to the next question? Uh, yes, first uh, we had a Leslie Quinn that was raising her hand originally. It looks like it got taken down. If you want to speak, please raise your hand again. Otherwise, we'll move on to somebody else. Okay, um, the next speaker is Michael Montenegro. If you please unmute yourself. I'm sorry, Mr. Montenegro, can you, oh, there we go, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, thank you, Mark, for answering, um, and the previous speaker before Mark for answering those, uh, we'll bring up those questions. Uh, that saves me the time to bring that up. Uh, I guess I'll just bring it back to the Chumash, the local Chumash Barbariano, uh, Barbariano tribe and their input and their input in this project i think it's just extremely extremely important that this project has direct input from the local Chumash community uh, th essentially their their input is like the foundation of this project um, i would i would strongly advise and recommend uh, the folks behind this project, this master project plan, to to put the effort and get in their in their input, and um, because I'm just kind of like repeating myself from previously, it's it, it's it might and since you, I'm really happy that you brought up the word equity because equity is a really important thing, and, um, and this isn't about murals. Just murals is more about development. The murals is a, 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 you know, it's a visual, you know, 2D type of thing. I'm talking about the Chumash um, should be consulted when it comes to uh, the public art projects. That like you say you want to have some art, some public art as a wall. The Chumash should be consulted uh, when it comes to the aesthetic of the part. 
the aesthetic of the park, the true mass should be consulted. Uh, the, the type of space, uh, the openings, the true mass should be consulted. You know, not everyone plays cornhole and ping pong. Um, so I, I just, I guess my thing is just not really a question, but it's something that I, I, I just want to express that concern that true mesh community needs, needs to be involved in this project. Um, I know the murals, when it comes to mural preservation, uh, it could be very costly and this project is really, is already enrolling. Um, so in my experience as a, as a local muralist uh, critic uh, and a cultural preserver of Santa Barbara, um, I know there's other creative ways in preserving these murals. Um, I think one idea is to outreach with the Santa Barbara Historical uh, Museum because Ortega Park is so significant to Santa Barbara's identity. You know, with, with bringing back to skateboarding park, that's really great because skateboarding is a part of Santa Barbara's identity, but to also to kind of reevaluate the, the community's identity because this type of project brings into brings in gentrification and displacement. And one of my previous questions and uh, before this webinar was the quality of the community outreach. What was the quality of of the people inputting their voices? Are they actually from the community? I, I was really pleased to hear that there was one person earlier who lives on Coda Street. Uh, she was able to input her, her, her voice into this. Uh, but yeah. Like, so Michael, I'm, I'm just, yeah. Michael, if I you know, apologize for interrupting, if you allow me to jump in here. Um, I, I can assure you that um, one of the focuses uh, for us is going to be to provide an opportunity to be inclusive of uh, our community. And, and, and I hear what you're saying, and I understand it uh, perfectly. Uh, one of my goals is going to be to to be uh, definitely involved in uh, initial uh, process for for uh, reaching out to the community, reaching out to our Shumash uh, brothers and sisters. And I want to take this opportunity to actually put this out as an invitation to to uh, help us develop a, for lack of a better term, a, a uh, I don't know Ortega Park uh, Art Committee, uh, much like it was done back in uh, 1979 and. And then again, in, in early 2004, with uh, the restoration of the actual murals, uh, and, and that worked uh, real nice. Uh, the other element in that uh, is, you know, by, by being inclusive and bringing in our, our, our too much brothers and sisters, our elders, uh, to work uh, also with the youth, the parents, uh, and, and, and also get them involved in the whole process from, from the very beginning, the, the very initial stages. I think. Uh, yeah, and I agree with you 100%. That's very, very important. I, I want to extend an invitation to you. I, I know you're very knowledgeable in, in cultura mexicana, Chicano activism and all that. And, and I would stand, extend an invitation to you to, to be involved in it, and, uh, to Marcus and, and his family and many of the elders in the community to help us with this process. So I, I very much appreciate you bringing and, and being uh, you know, part of La Guardia, you know, uh, uh, be, being on top of this stuff, because this is very important. Like you said, it does provide us uh, with uh, a very important anchoring point, and that is the identity of a people, uh, First Nations, and, and, and we need to retain that. And, yeah. and I can assure you, I will do everything I can to uh, make that uh, possible, and, and I hope you join us in this process. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Well, I'm happy to hear that from you. I would just, it would make me feel really be real, feel better if Justin Van Mullen would be committed to that and the other people behind this project because I just want that the community identity, the Ortega Park identity from historical, um, it just takes, it, it, it takes into account. So um, I really appreciate everyone's time and I'm looking forward to how things get uh, developed. So sorry for taking up so much time. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and thank you for your input. We really hope that uh, you become part of this uh, this uh, art committee and uh, to help foster the success of uh, of the master plan and the uh, park project. Okay, it looks like Sebastian Aldana would like to speak again. 
Go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, well, okay. Um, well, for one, I too also live on East Coda. I'm about two and a half blocks from, from the park. So, um, but I know we're talking about art and, and, and culture, uh, but to be clear, is all the art going to be the cultural art, the same type as we have and along with the shoe mash? Or are we also going to uh, incorporate uh, daisies and uh, tulips and stuff like that? That is, sir. Uh, go ahead, Cardo. Turn on your mic. Mr. Sebastian, if if uh, if you join us on the art planning committee and and you like tulips and daisies, yes, uh, give us that input and we will consider it. But uh, I, I think it's important to to uh, give everybody an opportunity, a voice to to express, you know, what they would like to see, and and that's where we're going with it. But uh, I, I I think, and 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 I believe uh, Mr. Montenegro, uh, you know, can can speak on this too uh, when we go through this art committee planning process, and and that is that yes, identity, a neighborhood identity, uh, you know, has to be one of the core elements of of all these different uh, uh, art concepts that are going to be developing. And to accomplish that, it's important that we have uh, uh, people in the art committee, uh, one with a, an interest and a passion for art and the preservation of, of uh, identity and culture. Um, you know, that, that's very important. And we can only do that by, by being inclusive of everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, and I think that's how we're going to arrive at a point where we're going to find that uh, the input provided through that process is going to give us a social equity and commitment to to the history of what Ortega is, and that's you know nuestra casa, nuestra nuestro barrio, ¿verdad? And and, uh, and I hope that you join us on that process too, uh, uh, Sebastian. Okay, yes, uh, please uh, include me because I'm just going back to when you first started talking. You said it was going to be true to the original murals. So I just wanted to make it clear that we're, that we're staying with uh, culture art, you know, uh, as far as the uh, tulips and daisies, uh, uh, they're beautiful, but I'd rather have them in my front yard, not on the, not on the wall at uh, Ortega Park. And, and one thing also that the, uh, the, um, the shade sales or the sale shades, that doesn't quite uh, jive with um, the, the culture. Maybe, maybe if we can, uh, just you know, possibly um, leave that open, you know, for a different um, type of style of, for shade, you know. Thank you for your input. That's uh, something we can definitely um, the study. Okay. Thank you both, uh, Justin and Ricardo. Okay, I do not see any more raised hands. If anybody else would like to speak, please raise your hand now. And no, no more. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We have, yes, April Montoya. April, go ahead and unmute yourself. Click the little microphone icon. Hmm. If you look at the slide, you can see where the microphone button is located. Hmm. It doesn't look like um, she's able to unmute herself. Okay, um, we have a Sarah M who's also wanting to speak. We'll go to her and see if uh, Ms. A Ms. Montoya can can unmute herself later. So we're going to Sarah M. Please unmute yourself. Go ahead. Sarah M, please go ahead. Uh, your microphone is showing green, but we cannot hear you.
Okay, hold on. It looks like she's joining on another platform. Mm. It does not look like it's working. Um, let's try April Montoya again. Ms. Montoya, how I, I'm afraid that you are not able to mute, unmute yourself. Um, if you want to type your question into the question panel. All right, uh, I do not see a question from Ms. Montoya, so. And uh, and nope, so I guess that's it. All right, well, uh, thank you, Rose. I wanted to conclude with uh, just saying how important it is to continue with the um, uh, involvement in this uh, community art program, that we're gonna need your help to uh, foster this art program through, and uh, we appreciate all of your time. Thank you. Rose.